Abraham in Quran, Abraham in Quran and Bible. The story of Abraham in the Quran and the Bible. Ibrahim, Abraham, is one of the prophets who are conceded in all the books of Revelation, the Bible, Old Testament, the Gospel, New Testament, and the Quran. He is one of the messengers of inflexible purpose. As it mentioned in the Quran. How has Abraham been mentioned in the Bible and the Quran and are there any omissions or contradictions therein? Are there any contradictions between his mention in the Quran and the Bible? Let's have a look. The only one deity. In the Bible, the story of Abraham was mentioned starting from God's call to him to leave his land with his wife Sarah. In Genesis 12 God's call to Abram, Abraham, in Matthew's Bible, the following was written. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing, and I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So Abram departed, as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him, and Abram was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. And Abram took Sarai his wife, and Lot his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered, and the souls that they had gotten in Haran. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan, and into the land of Canaan they came. After a thorough search in the Bible, I found nothing in regard with the story of Abraham's belief of Allah the only one deity, despite the very abundant incidents and events therein that story. In the Quran, the whole story of Abraham was mentioned in details, Allah, may he be glorified and exalted has said regarding his search for the true deity. And as Ibrahim, Abraham, said to his father Ezer, Do you take to yourself idols for gods? Surely I see you and your people in evident error. And thus did we show Abraham the realm of the heavens and the earth that he would be among the certain, in faith. So as soon as the night outspread over him, he saw a planet. He said, This is my Lord. Then, as soon as it set, literally waned, faded, he said, I do not love the setting, things, then, as soon as he saw the moon emerging, he said, This is my Lord. Yet as soon as it set, he said, Indeed unless my Lord guides me. Indeed I will definitely be of the erring people, and when he saw the sun rising, he said, This is my Lord. This is greater. But when it set, he said, O oh my people, indeed I am free from what you associate with Allah, and his people argued with him. He said, Do you argue with me concerning Allah while he has guided me? And I fear not what you associate with him, and will not be harmed, unless my Lord should will something. My Lord encompasses all things in knowledge, then will you not? Remember, O Messenger, when Abraham, peace be upon him, said to his father, Azar, who was an idolater, O father, do you make the idols into gods that you worship besides Allah? I think that you and your people who worship idols are clearly misguided from and confused about the path of truth because of your worship of others besides Allah. Allah is the only being that deserves to be worshipped, and nothing else has a right to be worshipped. In the same way I showed Abraham the misguidance of his father and his people, I also showed him the vast kingdom of the heavens and the earth. So that he could use that as an indication of Allah's oneness and of his being the only one deserving of worship. This also made him certain that Allah is one without any partner and that he has power over everything. When the darkness of the night came over Abraham, he began to debate with his people in order to bring them from idolatry to monotheism. His people used to worship the stars, so when he saw a star he said, This is my Lord, with the aim of convincing his people. When the star disappeared, he said, I do not like that which disappears, because the true God is always present and never disappears. The belief of his people was that gods do not go away and disappear, so he used this same belief of theirs as an argument against them. When Abraham saw the moon rising, he said to his people, This is my Lord, continuing his argument against them. When it disappeared, he said, If Allah does not guide me to his oneness and worship I will certainly become one of the people who are astray from his religion and who worship others besides him. When he saw the sun rising, he said to his people, This thing that is rising is my Lord. It is bigger than the star and the moon, further continuing his plan of argument and proof against them. When it disappeared, he said, O oh my people, lamb free of what you associate as partners with Allah. I have devoted my religion to Allah who created the heavens and the earth without any precedent, throwing off idolatry and embracing pure monotheism. 
I am not one of the idolaters who worship others besides Allah. Abraham's people, who were idolaters, disputed with him with respect to Allah's oneness and they threatened him with their idols. He said to them, Do you argue with me about Allah's oneness and worshipping him alone when my Lord has guided me to it? I do not have any fear of your idols, because they have no ability to harm or benefit, unless Allah wills. Whatever Allah wills happens. Allah's knowledge covers everything and nothing in the earth or in the heaven is hidden from him. Will you, then, not be mindful, O people, and stop your disbelief and associating of partners with Allah and believe in him alone? How can I be fearful of the idols you worship besides Allah when you have no fear of your associating as partners with Allah things that he created, without having any proof for doing so? Which of the two groups, the monotheists or the idolaters, is more deserving of safety and security? If you know which group is more deserving, then follow that group. The more deserving group is undoubtedly the group of the believers who are monotheists. Those who believe in Allah follow his laws and did not pollute their faith with polytheism, they will be the ones who will be safe and secure. They are the ones to whom their Lord has shown the path of guidance. The argument of the setting of the star, moon and sun, which Abraham used to defeat his people in the debate, is my argument, which I showed and gave him to use against his people. I raise and rank whichever of my servants I wish in this world and the afterlife. Your Lord, O Messenger, is wise in his creation and handling of matters, and he knows about his servants. Al-Anam, 74-83 Then he, may he be glorified and exalted, has said regarding Abraham's attempts to persuade his father and his people to abandon worshipping the idols they made themselves. And surely of his sect indeed was Ibrahim, Abraham, when he came to his Lord with a sound heart, as he said to his father and his people, What is it that you worship? Is it falsehood, as, gods other than Allah you desire? What then is your expectation from the Lord of the worlds? So he looked a look, i.e., gazed at the stars, at the stars, yet he said, Surely I am ailing. Then they turned away from him, withdrawing, so he went apart to their gods, then he said, Will you not eat? What is, wrong, with you that you do not speak, so he went apart upon them, i.e., their idols, striking with his right hand, then the people came toward him, hastening, he said. Do you worship that which you, yourselves, carve, and Allah created you and whatever you do? They said, Build him a structure, and, then cast him in the hell fire, so they were willing to devise a plot against him. Yet we made them the basest, and, then, he said, Indeed, I will go to, where I am ordered by, my Lord, he will guide me, Quran.com 37. Then, Allah Almighty sent Abraham, peace be upon him, to his people after they had gone astray and worshipped the stars and idols. In the Quran, he says, And I granted Abraham proof against his people in his childhood, and I knew him well. I gave him the proof he deserved according to my knowledge. When he said to his father Azar and his people, What are these idols that you have made with your own hands, and which you constantly worship? His people said to him, We found our forefathers worshipping them, we also worship them follow an example. Abraham said to them, You and your forefathers are in clear deviance from the path of truth. His people said to him, Are you serious about what you said, or are you joking? Abraham said, No, I am serious. Your Lord is the Lord of the heavens and the earth, he created them without there having been anything like them previously. I am from those who testify that he is your Lord and the Lord of the heavens and the earth, and that your idols have no share in that. And in a manner inaudible to his people, Abraham said, By Allah. Once you have left your idols to go to your festival, I shall hatch a plot concerning them that you shall hate. So Abraham broke the idols into small pieces, and left the biggest of them hoping that the people return to it to ask it who smashed the others. So when they returned and found their idols having been smashed into pieces, they asked one another, Who smashed our idols? Indeed, the one who has smashed them is from the oppressors, due to him having degraded that which deserves reverence and sanctification. Those who had heard Abraham take an oath on Allah that he would plot against the idols, said, We heard a young man talk evil regarding them and finding fault with them. He is known by the name Abraham, perhaps it is he who smashed them. Their chief said, Bring Abraham in front of the people so that they may testify to his confession to what he did, and their confession will be your evidence against him. So they brought Abraham, peace be upon him, and questioned him, blaming him, Was it you who did this horrible act to our idols, O Abraham? Sarcastically, exposing the helplessness of the idols to the people, Abraham said, I did not do it, rather, the biggest idol did it. 
ask your idols, if indeed they are capable of speaking. So they turned to one another contemplating and considering. It had become clear to them that their idols do not benefit nor harm in any way, and so they were wrong in worshipping them instead of Allah. Shame on you, and shame upon that which you worship other than Allah, which neither benefit nor harm. Do you not understand that? Will you not leave their worship? When they found themselves incapable of countering Abraham with proof, they resorted to force and said. If you are going to give Abraham a deterring punishment and seek revenge for your idols that he broke and destroyed, then burn him in a fire. They lit a fire and threw Abraham into it, so I said, O oh fire! Become cool and safe for Abraham. And so it became such, and no harm came to him. Abraham's, peace be upon him, people planned to burn him and I foiled their plan. Rather, I made them the ones who were overpowered and destroyed. I saved Abraham and I also saved Lot. I expatriated them to the land of Syria that I had blessed, by having sent many prophets to it and by scattering many forms of goodness for the creation. Surat al Anbiya, 51-70 I was very surprised how this very important part of Abraham's prophethood was omitted, but again after thinking why it had not been mentioned, I recognized the answer. The call of Abraham was a call for monotheism, for worshipping one deity, Allah, a deity whose power exceeds that of the sun, moon, idols, or even humans. The Great Sacrifice In Genesis 22 it was mentioned that Abraham was commanded by God to offer Isaac for sacrifice. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering, and laid it upon Isaac his son, and he took the fire in his hand, and a knife, and they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father, and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering, so they went both of them together. One of the things that grabbed my attention is that God had commanded Abraham to take his only beloved son to offer him as a burnt offering above one of the mountains which he will tell in the land of Moriah. In Genesis 17, and Abram was fourscore and six years old, when Hagar bare Ishmael to Abram. That means that Abraham was eighty-six years old. And in Genesis 21, and Abraham was a hundred years old, when his son Isaac was born unto him. Thus, how come that Isaac was the only son born to Abraham when that incident took place? On reading the part regarding the story of the sacrifice in the Bible, you get the feeling that there is a part missing in that story, and, actually there is. The story stated that Abraham was commanded to offer his son as a burnt offering, but at the end of the story, it was mentioned that he bounded his son and was about to slay him. Then he was ransomed with a horned sheep. The true and whole story was mentioned in the Quran, My Lord, grant me, a child, from among the righteous. So we gave him the good tidings of a forbearing youth. So we gave him the good tidings of a forbearing youth. Then when he, his son, reached the age of endeavouring with him, he said, O oh my son, surely I see in a dream, literally, time of sleeping, that I should slay you. So, look, what do you see? He said, O oh my, dear, father, perform whatever you are commanded. You will soon find me, in case Allah, so, decides, among the patient. And when they had both submitted and he put him down upon his forehead, and we called out to him, saying, O oh Ibrahim. Abraham. You have fulfilled the vision. Indeed, we thus reward the doers of good. Surely this is indeed what is the evident trial. And we ransomed him with a great sacrifice, and we left for him, favorable mention, among later generations, peace be upon Ibrahim. Abraham. Indeed, we thus reward the doers of good. O oh my Lord! Grant me a pious child who will be a means of help for me and a substitute for me for my people in the wilderness. So I answered his supplication for him and gave him news which pleased him, when I gave him the good news of a child who would grow old and become forbearing. This child was Ishmael, peace be upon him. When Ishmael grew into a youth and reached working age, his father Abraham saw a dream. The dreams of prophets are a form of divine revelation, 
so Abraham said to his son, informing him of the meaning of this dream, O my son. Indeed, I saw in my sleep that I am slaughtering you, what is your opinion in the matter? Ishmael replied to him saying, O my father. Do whatever Allah has commanded you to do in slaughtering me. You will find me one of those who are patient and content with the order of Allah. So when they submitted to Allah and obeyed him, Abraham laid his son down on his forehead, to carry out the order given to him to slaughter his son. I called out to Abraham while he was about to carry out the order of Allah to slaughter his son, saying, O oh Abraham! You have fulfilled the dream you saw in your sleep by resolving to slaughter your son. Just as I rewarded you by freeing you of this great trial, I also reward those who do good by saving them from trials and difficulties. Indeed, this was a clear test which Abraham passed. And I set Ishmael free in exchange for a huge ram which was to be slaughtered instead of him. I preserved good praise for Abraham to remain among the following nations. As a commemoration for Abraham from Allah, and a prayer to keep him safe from every harm and difficulty. Just as I requited Abraham with this reward for his obedience, I also reward those who do good. Indeed, Abraham was one of my believing servants who fulfilled the demands of his servitude to me. And I gave him glad tidings of another son who would become a prophet and a pious servant, he was Isaac. It was another reward for his obedience to Allah by resolving to slaughter his only son, Ishmael. And I showered upon him and his son Isaac my special blessings and gave them both many bounties, from which one was an increase in offspring. There were those in their progeny who did good by obeying their Lord, and those who clearly wronged themselves by disbelief and committing sins. As Safet 100-113 to conclude, all the mentioned above were parts of the story of Abraham in the Bible on one hand and in the Quran on the other hand, supported with quotations from both books. And I hereby leave the judgment to our respectable reader to carefully look up and search for the logical and ultimate clear truth. This does not necessarily mean that the Bible and the Quran are contradictory all the time, on the contrary. There are many concordances therein, even in the story of Abraham that will be demonstrated in a following article.